Man, it is bright. Um, well, today's project, RV. I'm gonna hook up the, um, uh, the laptop up here to this dude. Uh, this is a International Motor Max Force. I don't remember what the motor is. Um, it's got a check engine light on and a DEF. That's the uh, particulate filter light, a little triangle that came on. But I'm letting the laptop uh, fire up and got it hooked up there. I don't remember what engine this is. It's a, uh, yeah, I don't remember. I said I was just out here last week, but. Um, of course, you know, when you come to do a um, diagnostic, it's important to not charge your laptop the day before. So you have to plug it into your truck. What sucks is this cord's long enough to go all the way over to my truck, but that cord's not on. I keep forgetting to put a um, extension cord in my truck just for stuff like this. But we're gonna let this fire up. I'll turn the key on and I'll show you the stuff on the uh, on the dash there. All right, so fire my trusty laptop up. We are going to plug this guy in. And we're gonna use Service Max. So when you fire up Service Max, most of the time, if you're already connected to the vehicle, <clears throat> it'll go ahead and get all the information and it'll tell you, oh, this right here will populate. It's searching right now. And that's our active code. Engine fuel system above warning temperature. And this tells us what everything that was happening while that code popped up. So right now we're doing a regen. See, that's my, I gotta be careful touching the screen because this thing's touch screen, but that. Right there, that tells me my percentage left on doing it. That's how much my sit loading is. I don't think it's a DEF problem. Um, it said it was about 30% on it. So we're gonna do the regen just as a uh, preemptive and then go out and do a road trip. I don't really see anything at all. We got a bunch of different, you know, we can check our exhaust temperatures and everything. And that tells us our DPF inlet, our DPF outlet. It's pretty close. I think the, um, while driving, you want the inlet and outlet to be within about 30 or 40 degrees. When you're doing a regen test, you know, it's a little different. Everything seems to be fine. I don't really see anything that's telling me why this co would be up. I talked to the uh, the guy that picked the truck up, or the, the RV up. They filled it up. The fuel was all the way full. The owners of this drove to weather, or drove, you know, pretty close to, you know, I don't know, 40 miles away. Hooked the vehicle to the back of, or no, hooked the vehicle to the back of it, drove 40 miles, and then he got this code. So I'm not sure why this code popped up, but that's what we're trying to figure out. So we'll get this regen done and then go from there. All right, so fuel, uh, fuel temperature warning above uh, maximum value, whatever they, what it was. Basically what that is, um, uh, I looked it up and I remember that this, this engine is basically a Ford 6.4. Um, International kind of gave up on these motors after a while because they had so many problems. Now this, <clears throat> a lot of RVs like this one uh, have really, really low mileage. So they're not bad engines or anything uh, for low mileage. Once you get up around 100,000, they're pretty much toast. And the ones that you get from International, if you're going to go that route, there's no updates on them or anything. So anyway... There's basically two cooling systems on here that are interlinked. You've got a little hose that runs off from the water pump, goes over to a valve that opens and closes uh, via the computer, lets coolant go to the front of the vehicle, to the radiator, um, it's a separate radiator, goes to that radiator, then goes up to a little deal on the side of the fuel filter housing, and I'll show you guys that. You see that line right there? That line runs over to this one right here, which comes up to this valve. Once the temperature is hot enough, uh, above like 120 degrees or 115, it opens this valve, 
which lets coolant flow from here through this radiator through this hose and this hose ends up going over back here you see that see all those stack of metal right there that's the fuel cooler so it runs into there and then the outlet for that goes back over there and then goes back over to the um, uh, lower radiator hose so there's a temperature sensor right there that's a fuel temp sensor and a temp sensor once it gets too hot it'll flag a code and it'll make the engine go into d rate so if it goes into d rate you're only going like 40 45 miles an hour so i'm going to pull this valve off it comes off really easy there's just two 12 millimeter bolts if you use these which i just went and bought clamp off your lines and i'll put a link for these down here you guys can buy that on amazon and i'll have a price floating around here <clears throat> but if you clamp these down like that on here and here then you won't lose any coolant so i'm going to go ahead and get that thing swapped out Before I take that valve off, I want to remind you guys, always, when you're working on a coolant system, open the cap slowly. That lets all the pressure out and then put the cap back on. So what'll happen, if there's any pressure built up in the sink right here, <clears throat> when you take that off, it can leak. So if you take that off, put it back on. Now it'll only leak so far and it'll create a vacuum in here to where it just won't, won't drain out exponentially. So something else I'm gonna do, <clears throat> I'm gonna loosen these really quick, make sure we've got coolant coming out of here and here, and then that's just to make sure that nothing's plugged up. so that's it um i didn't go into really really deep detail about the how to use the diagnostic stuff on here because a lot of you guys are never going to use the um <clears throat> the international program but i figured you kind of like to see that um that's it for this we need to go on a test drive i gotta get one of their guys to drive these i'm gonna hook my laptop up do a test drive come back everything is good then we're done um if not then i'll fire the video back up so if this video ends you'll know everything was a success but I appreciate you guys watching. Hit that like button, hit the subscribe button. Throw your comments down below if you've ever had any experience with these um, uh, ghost motorhomes or the, you know, the Ford 6.4 or the Max Star 7 is what International calls it. For those of you who don't know, International made the Ford engines for the 7.3, the 6.0, and the 6.4, and then Ford started making their own 6.7. So this was the last power stroke motor that International made. They're kind of, hunk, kind of hunks of junk. I don't like them. Uh, nobody really likes them. So anyway, Hope you liked the video and um, get out and fix something.